QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Adjust opening balances. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars practice file that we started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time, maximizing the homepage to the gray area in the view drop down, noting we got the hide icon bar, open windows lists checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Go into the reports drop down to open up the major two financial statements and the trial balance. Starting with the profit and loss, the P and the L will run the date range from 010122 to 123122. And let's customize it to bring in the fonts and the numbers up, changing the font to 12. You're not required to do this, but I'm going to do it so you can see it better. And then we're going to go to the reports drop down and look at the balance sheet this time, the big balance sheet. And do the changing of the ranging up top. I'll say this is 010122 to 123122. And then fonts and the numbers changing the font size up to 12 again. Okay, yes, please. And okay. Let's open up the trial balance too by going to the reports drop down and going to the trusty TB, the trial balance 010122 to 123122. And then customize that report with the fonting and the numbering to change it in to 12 in and yes in and okay in. There we have it. The project we have been working on is imagining that we had another accounting system before starting our QuickBooks accounting system. We took the ending balances as of the last day of the prior period. This is our worksheet to do that from the prior accounting system as of 123122, which only includes balance sheet accounts because we're just because the income statement accounts roll into the equity section. And we're entering these as of our beginning balances and then we're going to start entering new data into our system starting after the cutoff date of january 2023 now the process that we used to do this is instead of having one large journal entry to enter this transactions to enter each account one at a time allowing quickbooks to use whatever form appropriate to enter the transaction and also allow any other bookkeeping needs to be put in place, including allowing the subledgers as well as allowing the process for us to complete any future transactions related to these balances. The checking account, for example, being entered with a deposit or transfer form, the accounts receivable being entered with an invoice, allowing us to create subledgers by customer and allowing us to receive payments on the invoice in the normal accounting process inventory having the subledger account breaking out the inventory by item these two are pretty straightforward the accounts payable also having a subledger account entering with the format of a bill so that we can then pay the bill in the normal accounting process because we did it that way quickbooks put the other side to equity because every transaction has at least two accounts impacted the other side went to equity possibly in the format of just going to opening balance equity, which is kind of like a holding account, which is QuickBooks telling us, hey, look, we just dumped the other side into this equity account. And so you should basically double check that at this point in time, which is what we're going to do. Or they put it into the income statement, for example, with the invoice that was created when we put the accounts receivable and the bills which were put in place when we made the accounts payable. But because we entered it as of the prior year, those will still roll into equity in terms of the equity account and still be part of equity. So everything's in equity. All of our beginning balances are correct. Total equity is now correct, but we want to adjust our equity account to be appropriate at this point in time to one account. So let's see that over here. We entered each of these transactions. They look good and we checked them last time so they look good until we get down to here where we've got the equity accounts broken out now on the trial balance you can see both the income statement accounts and the balance sheet accounts so if i run this report for 2022 the prior year then you can see the whole thing and i can say okay well this the 72396 plus the 20500 minus the 15000 that gives us the 77890 96 which is our equity here 
if I increase this to the current year that we're going to start entering data as of after the cutoff date, January of 2023, 0101-23 to 1231-23, then we see that those income statement accounts are gone and it rolled into this account, which is an equity account. And, and therefore, we still have the same balance of 72396 plus the 5500 of the 778, which is the balance that we want. Now, in our scenario, I'm not worried about the income statement for the prior period because if I go back to the income statement here, we could see that we have this amount in the prior year in uncategorized expenses and uncategorized income. That doesn't really make sense. We shouldn't have uncategorized income and expenses, but it's in the prior year. And if I wanna look up the detail for those transactions, I'm gonna look at my prior accounting system because I just want the beginning balances in place for January 1st going forward of 2023. So if I was to change the year here, once again, just to show, just to make sure we understand this, 1231, 123 there is nothing in the current year because it rolls into the balance sheet. That's how the income statement is related to the balance sheet. So I'm not worried about it. If you were worried about it, however, I could, I could say 010123 to 123123. I could make, I'm sorry, 22 to 123122. I could make a journal entry closing the 20,500 and the 15,000 out to the balance sheet account of opening balance equity. If, if, if I chose to do that, that's one way you can do it. I'm not gonna do that because I'm not worried about it because it closes out to equity anyways. And I'm only worried about what's happening after the cutoff date. So you can see that here too, because I got the net income if I run this as of 2023. But if I run this as a, I'm sorry, if I run this as of 2022, if I bring it up one day to 2023, that income will now roll into the equity account, which is owner's equity. So, so now everything looks good, except that I have this opening balance equity, which is ugly. You don't really want to report opening balance equity to like external users because it indicates that, that you haven't really cleaned things up. It's kind of not really professional because QuickBooks is using that account as an account to tell you that that's where they dumped the other side of all the transactions instead of just putting it into the equity so that you can double check it basically. So what we would like to do is take the money out of there and put it into the equity account so that it looks proper and more professional. And just to get a recap on this, remember that we have the assets and then the liabilities and equity, right? So you got assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets minus the liabilities equals the equity. The equity represents then the, the book value of the company. So it represents, in other words, the owner's ownership interest in the assets of the company as opposed to the third party often the bank's ownership interest in the assets of the company right claims to the assets of the company it's the other half other side of the coin this is what we have this is who has claim to what we have now the equity section if we only have one owner because it's a sole proprietorship for example then i should only have one account in the equity section unless you want to have another account for draws for example an owner investment but we only have accounts representing one owner and we could just use one equity account to do that uh, if however you have a partnership then it's going to be more complex and because you're going to have two or more partners and you can have at least one equity account per partner called a capital account and you'll have to break out the equity per partner which becomes a little bit more tedious especially since quickbooks uses that income net income account kind of messes things up when you're trying to break out the income to the to each partner but you've got you've got that and so you have to consider that if you're a partnership partnerships are actually more complex on the equity side of things because each partner might have different partnership equity accounts corporations are actually in some ways easier than a partnership because the corporation then is just going to have in essence one account called retained earnings and possibly a common stock account representing the investment from the owner in the company and then the retained earnings income that have been given back to the to the uh, shareholders in the form of dividends. And then the ownership interest is not broken out by separate capital accounts as in a partnership, but rather by who owns how many shares, all the shares are equal units of ownership in theory. So that's gonna be the idea. We only have one owner, a sole proprietorship. So all I'm gonna do then to clean this up 
is to take that 72, I'm just gonna write it down, 72396, just so I have it here, and do a journal entry out of owner's equity and put it into the equity. I could do that. My, mo my most natural response would be to open a journal entry to do that and do it with debits and credits here. But I'm gonna try to use the registers whenever possible. And, and remember the general format whenever you're entering data into QuickBooks. You, you're gonna say, usually I'm gonna to go to the homepage, I'm gonna use a form whenever I can use a form. Because as we saw when we entered the opening balances here, the forms are often connected to things like the sub ledger, as well as to making the data input on the customer center and vendor center tracking the transactions as easy as possible from the bookkeeping side of things, as well as making the general ledger accounts correct. If there is no form to enter the transaction, the form will then typically be the journal entry, debits and credits that we will then have to use. But uh, you don't have to use a journal entry to enter the transaction because we could use the, the, the register, which is like in a plus and minus format. So for example, I could go to the list drop down chart of accounts and I've got the checking account, which we're familiar with the register look on a checking account kind of, because it looks like a checkbook, but each of the balance sheet accounts have a register as well. So if I go down to the, to the equity accounts, uh, I might not be able to enter it into the, to the owner's equity directly because owner's equity is kind of a special account because that's the account that net income rolls into. And whether you're a partnership or whether you're a corporation or sole proprietorship, you wanna understand which account the equity is rolling into. And you can see uh, here because it doesn't have, you know, the balance in it because it's kind of, it's changing with the income statement. The income statement is rolling into the equity. So I'm gonna go into the, to the opening balance equity account, double click on it, here's the register, and I'm just gonna enter a journal entry as of 12-31-22, and I'm just gonna say there's 72,396 in it. I want it to go down to zero, so I'm gonna decrease it in the decrease side. Notice the terms up here, increase and decrease. I'm gonna take it down 72396, and I'm gonna say the other side is gonna go into equity, or what did I say, what, what do they call it, owner's equity? owner's equity and this is going to be the beginning balance adjustment i'm going to call it so there it is so now the balance goes down to zero they moved it up here because everything's at 1231 but there it is if i double click on that i could have done it with a journal entry here's the actual journal entry that's the actual form that's being used i might put the adjustment here to on the memo so so there it is i put it into owner's draws that's not where i want it to go I wanted to go to owner opening. I wanted to go to owner's equity, not owner's draws. Change that. I changed it to equity. Save it and close it. It says you have changed it. I'm going to say yes, and then it gives me this little little message, and this is a warning telling me, well, let's read it. You are about to post to retained earnings account uh, owner's equity. QuickBooks uses this account to track profits from earlier periods that have not yet been distributed, meaning earnings that have been retained. It's kind of like a retained earnings account that have not been distributed in the form of draws or dividends. This is an automatically generated account, and in most cases, you should post to another equity account. So generally, we don't post to that account, but we can, and we just got to make sure we know what we're doing. So that's a good warning. I'm going to say, okay, I know, I hear you, but we're, we know what we're doing here. I'm going to close it out and then go back to the balance sheet and say, okay, so now we have that one account because we have one owner of the 77,896. Now, again, I might break out if I have an, a sole proprietorship, another account for draws when I take money out of the company so I can track in a separate account the money that we took out. We also might have another account for investments, which is not as common, but still could be useful for the money that I'm putting into the company for my personal checking account. But the total equity is, is just one equity account in this case, because it's just a sole proprietorship, one owner. And that's the general idea. So we should tie out, there's the 77,896 and everything is in place. We can see it here on the balance sheet and we can also see it here on the trial balance format. Let's go to the trial balance. So it looks good. You could check your numbers and everything looks good going forward. Nothing's in the income statement. And so when I go to the profit and loss next time and I go into the current year, 010123, 
oh and uh, 12 31 2 3 we have nothing in it uh, going forward and everything should be set up and we're ready to go and enter data for the for the following period which we'll do in future presentations